Okay, this is uh, experiment A1, um, the common emitter amplifier circuit. So, just to remind ourselves of the circuit, um, this is the uh, circuit here. Um, you're given this circuit here and you need to connect it up uh, as shown there. So, when you connect up the circuit then, what you should see on the uh, oscilloscope is something like this. Um, this trace here on the oscilloscope is the input and that's on channel 1 uh, of, the, of the scope and you can see here that it measures about 2 volts uh, or thereabouts uh, peak to peak. Uh, the other trace then on channel 2 is this one here and this trace represents the output of the amplifier and it's on channel 1, oh sorry it's on channel 2 and we can see that it measures about 3.44 volts peak to peak. Um, you can also use these measurements down here uh, the, these measurements here give the volts per division and for channel 1 it's 500 millivolts per division and for channel 2 it's 2 volts per division and the frequency, uh, the time base, it's 50 microsecond per division on the scope. And the frequency I have it set to, as you can see here, about approximately 5 kilohertz. So the first thing you should notice about the uh, two traces here is that the output trace here is not uh, in phase with the input signal. And we can see that uh, the, the peaks occur at different times. So in this case, the output is 180 degrees out of phase with the input. And we can see that from the trace. But the, the thing that um, you need to notice uh, about this and it has to do with the calculation of R1 and R2 and in this case R1 is 22 kilo ohms and sorry, R1 is 20, 22 kilo ohms and R2 is 10 kilo ohms and these two resistors set the Q point of our amplifier so under this condition if we have those resistors uh, in other words R1 22k and or to 10k. Uh, if I increase the input, which is this trace here, if you watch that trace there, if I increase the input, we can see that clipping starts to occur at about 2.3 volts peak to peak on the input. So clipping, the amplifier starts to saturate and it, you'll notice that it starts to clip on the trough of the output sine wave, like that. So it gets quite distorted if I increase the input further. You can see that the output uh, gets very distorted on the trough of the sine wave. So because it's not symmetrical, because we only get uh, clipping on the trough, it means that the Q point is not in the correct location. So what you have to do is to recalculate R1 and R2 to improve in that situation. So what I'm going to do here is put in the new value of R1. And we can see now what difference it makes. So if I increase the input, which is this trace here, you can see now that clipping does not occur on either the peak or the trough until a much greater input amplitude. So we can see that uh, clipping now starts to occur at approximately 4.2 volts peak to peak on the input whereas in the previous one it was uh, approximately half of that. 
And the other thing you should notice as well is that while it's not quite symmetrical, um, we get clipping occurring almost simultaneously on both peak and trough. And that indicates that our cue point is approximately optimally uh, calculated on the load line. So that's what you should notice. The difference between the calculation for R1 and R2 and what difference, uh, the actual difference it makes on the output of the amplifier. Okay, so that's what, that's experiment A1 using the um, transistor as the common emitter amplifier.